So now we need to turn to Dennis Brennan. Dennis is going to show us uh, the use of his ballast and ballasting track, but he's going to do it kind of in a unique way uh, on a, uh, a diorama that he's building. So Dennis, I'll turn it over to you, sir. Oh, thank you, Jim. Hi, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, uh, yeah, I thought it's it, it's easy enough to show how I do my ballasting, but I think um, what I'd really rather do is show you how we get there. Okay, and we could do that best by um, um, showing you how I build this module. Now, you can take this and um, use it as an idea for building a module or actually um, use it as an idea of how you can insert scenery into your layout. Okay, so basically it's a two, it's going to be a two by four foot section, and I will share the screen right now. Um, so here we go. Let's see. Uh, are we seeing that uh, right now? Yep. There you go, right? Yep. yep. All right. So what I've done is this is a two by four foot section, and I've used um, uh, one by twos uh, along the bottom. And I just made a rectangle and I just uh, screwed and glued, <clears throat> glued the pieces together. Um, and originally, uh, I put a piece of um, ceiling tile. I take just a regular piece of ceiling tile. It comes in two by four foot sections. And uh, I turn it over and use the, the back side of it. Well, after I did that, I realized... I don't really want to work on a ceiling tile. I see I use them all the time. It's a great surface um, for for working on for doing scenery simply because you can glue it down. White glue will hold it. Um, uh, and uh, what I glued that to was a piece of Luan. I forgot to tell you that I used a piece of Luan um, plywood over the one by two um, one you know, two by four foot section. Then I used the ceiling tile and ceiling tile is great. Like I said, um, because it's easy, you can dig into it. Um, you can sand it, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. But after I put that on there, I realized now I really want to work with foam for this. And so I have these um, um, two inch pieces of foam uh, thickness. And so I cut out a piece of this pink construction foam and um, uh, I, I decided uh, that this module, you, you'll see I've got some, I've got a drawing on here. And now the drawing is going to, um, it, it locates the sidewalks and a building. And the building, I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. That's going to be my next kit. And that's what this diorama is for. And um, of course, we need a siding. Okay, and the siding is going to be up here. Now, this is just a little bit wider than uh, the piece of track that I'm going to use. Okay, so we're going to look at, okay, so here's what I did. Is if you're thinking about building something and you know where your track is going to go, which is going to go right on here, and I wanted the track to be up an embankment, and so I outlined... I had my building, so I outlined the footprint of the building, and I have these sidewalks um, uh, that that are basically uh, one inch wide. I, I make them. I'm going to actually start selling them. They're, they're one eighth inch high, um, and they're made out of, uh, uh, it's either going to be MDF or Masonite, one of the two. Uh, at any rate, I've got some sidewalks that are going to go here, and this is the street, of course, and then I've got another sidewalk on the other side. Um, and so I've kind of laid it all out. Uh, and and that I, I used the buildings and other accessories and, and placed them in and got them arranged the way I wanted. When I was happy, I drew them and stuck them down. And so now we get to creating the landform. Now, what I did, you can see, I use, I'm kind of unorthodox here. Um, not particularly here. I took a piece of foam uh, and I made an embankment. 
And right here, um, this building needs coal delivery, or at least one time it needed coal delivery. It probably doesn't use it anymore because the building went, it became something else, which you will see once I get that kit done, um, I will reveal all. At any rate, um, this is a coal chute that would go into the building. And of course, if you're going to have a coal chute, um, you need um, a hopper car full of coal. And um, so uh, I've also, and you'll see it, I've also made a little um, concrete coal um, bin up here that you, the car can unload into. And then presumably it slides down here and goes into the basement of the building. And then um, on each side of this concrete bunker for coal, um, we have some, and I use these, this is a, a Woodland Scenics HO uh, scale retaining walls. Uh, looks great in O scale. Uh, I have no problem using that in O scale. It looks great. Um, they're made out of resin, I believe. Uh, and I just stained them, I painted them. And the unorthodox thing, and it's not really unorthodox. You'll see this is masking tape, okay? And while here I had a nice embankment, over here I didn't want it to be um, made out of um, uh, foam and quite so nice because I wanted to have another little retaining wall here um, just, just to add visual interest and break it up. Uh, so that everything isn't always the same. So what I did here is uh, I left this open and then I crumbled up um, some newspaper, shoved the newspaper in there uh, until I got a, you know, a, a pretty good um, form. And then I just take regular masking tape and taped over it. Masking tape? Yeah, well, I discovered this one time. Uh, I had to do a photo uh, of an area, and I didn't have time to do a lot of landscaping. And I had a, I, I just took masking tape by itself. I didn't have anything underneath it, and I had to transition three quarters of an inch down to another flat surface. I was in a hurry. I had to finish the scenery, so I used masking tape. I thought, well, this will be temporary. What I discovered was <laughs> I painted it with brown latex paint, and then I sprinkled my scenery over it. Um, and then I add a little white glue, you know, like your diluted white glue, and add a little more scenery. I still have that on the basement layout in my house. It's still there, and this was 40 years ago. You can do this with masking tape. You don't need plaster. Um, but anyway, uh, so I, I used masking tape along here and then I like to use real rocks for a little bit of more, more interest. I have a place where I can get some real rocks. Um, it's actually on a railroad siding and it's the kind of rocks that kind of just flake and chip off. And I just get random pieces and, um, I bring them home. I've got a couple buckets full of them. And whenever I need a rock rather than cast a mold, I just use the real thing. Why not? Nothing's going to look better than, than something that's actually real. All right. So now um, I'll give you a little closer view of what I did with the tape. Um, I just used um, several layers of tape until it feels right. Okay. Until it's stiff enough. And I, you, you don't have to be real fancy with this. And as you can see, I, I let it run down here. I also let it run down here because I figure um, alongside the retaining wall, where wherever it's <laughs> wherever it's not supported, that that ground is going to to um, want to uh, just run down. Um, you're going to get a wash, dirt and and stuff. And because we have a structure here and over further, we don't want that here. So they put in a retaining wall to keep uh, stuff from falling down the embankment, gravel, and um, you don't want your uh, ballast to wa wash down. 
Um, so then um, uh, I also uh, placed the rock in, and now you can see like this newspaper and stuff that I use. It's just paper, actually. It's it's not newspaper. It's actually um, packing paper, but you could use newspaper too. And I just, um, all I did was um, just shoved it in. You can see where it was shoved through here. And I used that a little bit behind the rocks and then just shoved the rocks up until uh, I got to the foam. And you'll notice along the foam, I also um, carved the edges so there's a slight slope and nothing is real even. You don't want any hard corners on this stuff here. Well, now you can see um, what I did. Uh, this this a little bit further along. Um, I did my first layer of scenery. And so what I did over the tape, there's two things I did. Once, first I painted it with brown latex paint. It's a flat brown latex paint that I use and you can see I've used it everywhere. Um, I, I, I put that under everything uh, for several reasons. One, it's a good earth color and two, it seals whatever you're doing. It seals it. Um, and then, then I took uh, over the tape. I took sculpt mold. Um, it's just bas basically, if you don't know what that is, uh, most people do. But it's a paper mache product, real easy to work with. Um, mix it with a little water, and um, I color it as well. I just take a little bit of that brain brown latex paint, and I mix it in with the sculpt mold, which um, or cellu clay, either one of those. They're both about the same. Um, they're kind of gray, but I mix a little bit of brown paint in there and make it brown. And then when that dries, I then come back and Lots paint it radio. again. Pardon me? Somebody say something? All right. Um, anyway, uh, so I painted everything again once uh, I've got the sculpt them all the way I want it. And then you can see I let it come down here too. And I let it come down here. And over on this side, um, I used some coffee grounds over the sculpt the mold. I, I just painted it again, sprinkled on coffee grounds. You can see them right here. And, um, and then I added a little bit of base scenery, a little greenery and a little, just, just a little bit. I'm always letting something else show through. You don't want anything to be perfectly even. At least nature isn't like that. I mean, nature doesn't usually have one solid color of anything. Now, th this is a base layer. I'm going to put weeds and bushes and stuff over here, but I'm not ready to do that yet. Now, what is this? What have I got here? Well, what I've got here is the base for the building. I put the sidewalks in and I put, uh, this is not the finished street. All I did was I sprayed a dark gray primer down after I painted this, the, the foam with um, the latex paint. Now you can use spray paint on it. You can't spray foam, but if you, it, because it'll eat it. But if you cover it with a, a base coat of good latex, flat latex paint, you can spray over it. It's not going to eat the foam. It, there, you've created a barrier. So, um, and then over here, I have put in some, uh, these, these, it was a sheet of um, like um, cobblestone. Uh, I, it was in my toolbox. You can find these in hobby shops. It's actually more like uh, brick rather than cobblestone. Um, like a, well, maybe it's, it's one or the other. I think it's more like a cobblestone actually. Um, and then I spent, I just basically covered that with with uh, gray. Now, this is not finished, obviously. This is underneath, and a bunch of this stuff will be covered up. So what I do to make my streets is I'm going to take Dorm's Water Putty. Another gentleman just spoke about that. I love Dorm's Water Putty. It's great. Um, uh, I use... I will mix that up. It's like plaster. Um, and I I mix it up. You mix it with water. You get a, a fairly nice consistency. I also will put um, some um, 
black, either uh, black wash in there. Um, you can use tempera paint. You can use any kind of liquid uh, or acrylic based paint in there, mix it up and get yourself a nice gray. And so the next time we come back, I'll show you, I'll have that done. I do, I skim coat this with the dorms water putty. And, and then I will, I will allow some of these things to show not much, but I found, um, and I actually got this idea from a real industrial area street that's in the West Bottoms here in the Kansas City area, um, where there were various irregular patches of um, the the formerly cobblestone street covered over with um, macadam, and it's worn off. And so you got all these little areas. I may cover some up completely. We'll see how it goes, but I've got enough. Um to start with. Uh, well, Dennis, any... Dennis I, hate, I hate to stop you, but that's that's your time tonight. Ah, um, okay. Well, I thought I might have a little extra time since you said you were running light, light because somebody didn't show up, but I guess they did. They did, so I got them in, but I, now I'm... All I'm, right. I'm... Hey, uh, Dennis, I have a question for you. Sure. Um, when are you starting... Build that thing you just show us a minute ago. Um, this this building that I talked about. Yeah. Um, not sure yet. I'm waiting for. It's a new kit. All the parts are being cut as we speak. Um, and I'm waiting okay. for this gentleman to get me the pieces, and um, then I'll know when the kit will be ready to be reproduced. Um, but I have the kit. I mean, I built, I've already built two of the models. I just didn't want to show it quite yet. Um, so, um, but you'll, you'll know about it. Dennis, <laughs> thank you so much for this evening. I appreciate it. Huh? Uh, yeah. Okay. You're welcome. Um, we will get to ballasting. I'm going to do what? I think two more of these, right? Yeah. Um, so we'll get to the ballasting on the last one, but I want to get to, um, to show how we got there. I think that's important. So if anybody has uh, any questions, um, just email me. All right. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Dennis.